Hello and welcome to video 22. This is another energy problem and in this problem we have a large construction vehicle. You may have seen these on the sides of highways sometimes. They have springs in the back of them with little pads almost begging cars to hit them. It's not that they really want the cars to hit them but these trucks are here to protect the people working in front of this truck. So if a person's not paying attention and they hit this spring even at full speed this spring is designed to absorb most of the energy of this car, the kinetic energy it had before. For this problem we're going to assume that all of the kinetic energy in this car goes into the spring. Full disclaimer, that's not really what happens. The car crunches, uh, noises get made, hopefully the person breaks, so the energy can go other places. But these springs can store a lot of energy. And we're going to assume that all the kinetic energy that's in here goes into this spring. So, what we're going to say here is that the energy before really should be the same as after, except that it's going to move. So this is before, and this is after. As always, the total mechanical energy in the beginning, plus any work non-conservative, by those things like a breaking force and friction drag, which we're assuming don't happen here, equals the total mechanical energy final. Total mechanical energy can be kinetic or potential, and it has to include all the objects. In this problem, because this car does not change height at any point, we're going to assume the gravitational potential energy is the same before as it is after. We don't need to worry about it. We're going to assume that the kinetic energy of this vehicle, this little car, is zero when it stops. We're going to assume this truck stays at zero the whole time. So in the beginning, we're really left with just the kinetic energy of the car, which is one half. Oops. I get my pen back. One half mass of the car times the initial velocity squared. This is zero because there's no friction, no drag. There's no ogres coming in and knocking cars around. It's all going from one form of potential, or from kinetic energy, into uh, a form of potential energy in the spring in the end. So spring energy, one half k x squared at the end, is equal to the amount of kinetic energy you had in the beginning. It's nice that the halves cancel out, makes life easier. When I solve for x, we're going to get m over k di squared equals x squared, or x equals the square root of m over k vi squared, or breaking that apart, the square root of m over k times v. So for this particular problem, when we plug in the numbers, the mass of the car is 1,500 kilograms. The ginormous spring constant is 100,000 newtons per meter. And the velocity of the car initially is 20 meters per second. When you put all that in a calculator, you get a distance that the spring compresses of 2.45 newtons. The faster you go, the more the spring is going to compress. Again, this isn't a real world example. You're not going to have all the kinetic energy of a car go into a spring, but an awful lot of it does, and it's a really educational example. In the real world, a large percentage goes into the spring, but some of it's going to, hopefully, if the person breaks, go into friction. Some of it is going to go into the work necessary to crunch the front of this car, so it's going to go other places. But in a basic problem where we take all the kinetic energy in the beginning and say that all goes into potential energy, this is the expression for the spring compression, and this is the answer you get given the 1,500 kilogram car and the 100,000 newton per meter spring and the 20 meter per second initial velocity. As always, hope you found this useful.